Right, I'm here with actor John DeLuca. What's going on, man? How are you? I am, I'm good. I'm dry, sort of. How are you? So, yeah, you're dry for now. You for haven't now. left yet. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Now, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about when you first decided you wanted to be an actor? I know uh, you yeah. kind of got bit by the acting bug senior year of high school. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you're, you're brushed up on your... I on am the, all bio. things John DeLuca. Wonderful. Um, yes, that is, uh, that's correct. You know, ever since I was a kid, I, I knew I had an interest in it. Um, but because it wasn't like a traditional job necessarily, I, you know, I kind of like put it in the back of my mind a little bit. And, you know, I was in high school, I was an athlete, and I... Um, I was more focused on that at the time, but then, yeah, by my senior year, um, at the senior class play, the auditions came around, and I was like, ah, I really want to do it, and I just, you know what, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And um, I, 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 it was uh, for The Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I like had my parents sit down in my living room, and uh, I was like, well, just listen to me sing if I only had a brain, let me know if this is absolutely insane. <laughs> and so I did it, and I'm like, yeah, do it. Got the part, and uh, that kind of set everything in motion a little bit. That, and you were... Uh involved in athletics before uh, yes. before that, right? You were a wrestler? And yep, I was a wrestler. I played football since fourth grade. Uh, did pretty much every sport under the sun except for hockey. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was very martial arts. My dad's a martial arts teacher. We grew up doing Kempo Karate. I have two younger brothers. Now, how were your jock friends with the uh, switched acting? Did, how much ribbing did you take? Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's like, so, I mean, to be uh, totally honest, like that was a big part. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm an, you know, an athlete. I can't be doing theater while I'm in high school too. And um, that, that was kind of that, like that pull, uh, that, that kept me from it. Which now, looking back, is so silly, you know. But uh, as a high school kid, you don't really know any better. Absolutely but not. Ultimately, after I was like, this is what I'm doing. All my friends were like, yeah, like super supportive. Like, of course, this is what you should be doing. Um, because, you know, I've always been the kid who likes to be up in front of people and, and trying to make people laugh and all that stuff. So, uh, so yeah, no, they've, been, they've all been super supportive. Now, uh, after high school, you went to Fordham University where you majored in theater? Yes, yes, true story. Um, right. I, that wasn't always the plan. Um, coming out of school, I, I'd always just figured, you know, I'm going to go into business because that's what people do when, you know, I, I was like, I could be a good salesman. And, um, so I actually I applied to UMass Business School, uh, the Eisenberg School of Business, and I'd gotten in. And um, that was it was in-state tuition. I'm from Massachusetts, so mm -hmm. it was you know um, it was affordable, more affordable than Fordham. Uh, I'd applied to Fordham, but I didn't really get the financial aid that I needed to make it a possibility. So uh, I put a deposit down. This is August before my freshman year. Put a deposit down. I was ready to go. I had like a UMass sweatshirt, so ready to go. And then they called me back, offered me more money, and. Uh, in August, I took it as a sign, and yeah. Um, and yeah, and then here I came. Very cool. And then yeah. after Fordham, you you were here for a little while in New York, and then moved out to LA. Yes. Yeah. I um, so I did major in theater, and uh, I had a showcase, which is the culmination of you know mm -hmm. your your time at Fordham. I was lucky enough to sign with an agent and manager, and they repped me out here for uh, another two years. And um, uh, the little bit of traction I was getting was all TV film stuff. And my manager had since moved to the West Coast office. He was like, he was like dude, you should come out here. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I did. I bought a car and uh, took an 11 day, 11 day trip, drove out there with my dad. Nice. I'm sure that was a great bonding experience. It was one of the coolest things I've ever done, absolutely. Highly suggest uh, anybody driving across the country. Yeah. There's a lot to see. I guess I could go one way or the other. Either it goes really well or... <laughs> Or about halfway through the country, exactly. you're ready to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to let one of you out for good. Right, right. So go with somebody that you like. So, <laughs> so one of your um, first longer arcs was on the ABC Family show Twisted. Yes. Where unfortunately you were poisoned. I was. I was poisoned. What's with that? <laughs> I don't know. I know. That's, that's not a good thing for your first role. No, it was fun. What was, yeah, what was it what was like working on that show? It was really cool, you know? Um, everybody was super nice, and uh, yeah, it was the first time I kind of got to dive into an arc of, of any kind and be on a couple um, episodes of a show, and in that in itself was a cool experience, you know, to, to come back to the same set and to visit the same crew, mm -hmm. not just for an isolated guest star appearance or a co-star appearance. Right. Um, and that was a learning, you know, learning experience in itself. But uh, yeah, I, I loved working on the show. Nice. And sadly, that came to an end, unfortunately. It too did. Soon. It did. Um, and then you, uh, this little thing called Teen Beach Movie, come I've about. I've never heard of it. 
sitting there right now. I know. Like, what's that about? So, Teen Beach Movie came about. Um, I had previously worked with Disney Channel on um, my first job in LA. Actually, was a guest star in Wizards of Waverly Place, mm -hmm. where um, where they uh, Selena and company travel back in time to the nineteen. Uh, 60s and I play a uh, basically a greaser character who's like the cool kid in school. Uh huh. Kind of uh, butchy esque, which is I was my character. Say it probably came, yeah, I was gonna say it probably came in handy. When yeah. You so um, after that, I, I ended up booking a series regular on a Disney pilot um, with Maya Mitchell. Okay. In with Molly Gray, both ended up doing Team Beach with me. Um, and uh, the pilot experience was really great. I worked very closely with all the producers. And right after that is when Team Beach started filming. So um, that's when they brought me in. They're like, oh my God, you might be good for this thing. And um, I went in and I auditioned. Uh, I got the part and they said, pack your bags. You're leaving in two days for Puerto Rico for two months. And not a bad place to go shoot. No, no, not at all. It was a very surreal moment, very exciting. And uh, I don't think any of us really knew what we were getting involved with. Much like those other Disney-esque musical movies. Mm. Yes. It, once you do the first one, you never know how big it's going to end up being. I guess so, yeah. yeah. And I, I wasn't even thinking about that, you know? I, right. Um, in my mind, I still had this Disney pilot that I did and everybody seemed to be so in love with. Um, ultimately, that ended up not going and this became my kind of, my main thing with Disney, funny enough. But, uh, but yeah, it's been a crazy ride. And then the sequel just premiered uh, last week. It did. Uh, a little different uh, premise to it. Yeah, uh, different and, and similar. similar in the same sense. But yes, in the first movie, two modern day get characters get stuck in um, a movie. Mm -hmm. In the sequel, the movie characters get stuck in modern day. So it's flip flops. Flip flops. With, what was the main differences, obviously, besides the story working uh, from the first to the second? I mean, obviously, you're more recognizable now. Yeah. You, know, well, the, you were more comfortable, obviously, this time around because you had done it before. Yeah, you know. Uh, it, it was a different experience, and you mentioned being more recognizable. And because when we showed in Puerto Rico for the first one, you know, people knew who Ross was, mm -hmm. um, but that was pretty much it. You know, the rest of us, um, no one really knew who we were yet. But uh, this time around, you know, we get to the airport, and there's tons of kids there who have been waiting, you know, 15 hours to, you know, just until our plane unloaded. And, we immediately were like, oh, it's going to be different this time around. Yeah. And uh, even just shooting on location, you know, we shot on um, mostly a private beach, but we did some scenes on a public beach, which was kind of hectic. Right, um, right. But uh, other than that, you know, the, the songs and everything, the dances are a lot bigger and faster and a little bit crazier. And uh, we have a couple of new really great characters that we added to the story and to, you know, I think fans will, uh, will really love. Um, but yeah, we were, in, we were in the same location, we were in Puerto Rico again, and uh, we, we kind of knew all the spots to go and all the restaurants and all that stuff too, so that was cool. Cool. Yeah, and you've recently become involved in something called the Boot Campaign. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, the Boot Campaign, uh, my manager uh, had another <laughs> client who, was, who had gotten involved with it, and she thought it's something that might, might be down my alley, and um, I went and I did what's called a boot shoot, where... Uh, that's what they call it when they uh, they have a bunch of people come in who are, who are going to end up supporting the campaign. Um, you uh, you, you take a picture with your with your boots on essentially, and um, it's a it's a, a really great um, organization that uh, basically supports veterans uh, once they once they get back from from serving mm -hmm. wherever they're serving. Um, and I, I mean it's I just think it's a great cause because uh, I think it's easy to forget a how many people we have serving overseas or you know on our shores um, and not only how many we have but like you know they come back and it's, it's not always easy for them to get jobs or right. you know uh, I met a couple really cool really cool guys who you know had lost a leg or two legs or lost an arm and it's about kind of reintroducing them back um, and you know, whether it's getting them jobs and, and, and all that stuff and it's yeah it's a really great company I had a great time shooting with them. And now when you were in high school doing the Wizard of Oz, did you ever think you'd get to the point where you're actually the spokesperson and the voice of a, such a serious thing and be able to be the voice and use your celebrity for such a good cause? I mean, no, and I, I will clarify that there's lots of people who, uh, I wouldn't say I'm the voice of it whatsoever, but- it, Part of, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but just to be, I'm just a, a very small part of something that um, that is so special. But to answer your question, um, 
Mm, definitely not. <laughs> you know, I uh, you like to dream big and everything like that, but I, I never really thought I would be in a position to have any sort of influence like that whatsoever. So to even have a small version of that is it feels really great. Well, it's really cool when you know people who have established themselves and you know the younger generation of actors gets involved in, in you know causes that mean something to people so it's Absolutely. phenomenal. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So you have a project coming out in July. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's called that. Staten Island Summer. Um, it's, uh, it's a project I'm really excited about. It's, uh, it's a little bit different than um, things I've done before. It's, uh, it's from Lauren Michaels, our executive producer who, I, I don't know if you know, it's responsible for creating yeah. SNL. Yep. Um, that little also, show. That uh, little thing <laughs> called SNL. Um, and it's, it's from Paramount. And um, yeah, it's about a bunch of lifeguards in Staten Island. And uh, it's written by Colin Jost, who is a head writer at SNL and also does a weekend update for them. Um, and it's kind of loosely based around his life growing up in Staten Island as a lifeguard. Okay. And um, yeah, so it centers around two main kids. Um, who decided to be lifeguards their last summer before college. And um, and I'm one of the kind of wacky character lifeguards that surrounds those two. Um, it's a lot of fun, it's really, really funny, and I mean, just some really insanely funny, talented people in it that I felt so lucky to be involved with. Very cool. With. So on your next project, are you looking to get off the beach, or is that, some, is that a theme you want to Well, I moved continue? from the beach to the pool. Oh, to the pool. Okay, it's so pool. it was a pool yeah, lifeguard. Okay. At a swim club. Gotcha. But, uh, I mean, I will never complain about working on the beach. Or I the can't pool. see why you would. <laughs> uh, I get a tan while I work. So, um, so not necessarily. I think if, you know, if uh, there's something at a beach or at a pool, and it's great work with great people, I'm in. Sign you up, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what's one piece of advice that you were given um, that has really stuck by you, whether it was a co-star, whether it was even a parent, you know? Um, it's going to be hard to distill that down to one piece of advice, but I do have something that sticks out in my head, and it was while I was a student at Fordham, um, we had the actor Willem Dafoe come in and, uh, and talk to some of the theater majors, and, um, and he said something that stuck out. He said, figure out, and this is kind of applicable to all walks of life, not just as an actor, but I think that he said it was important to figure out what you want to do in life, what you are passionate about, what you love to do. Figure that out, acknowledge what that is for yourself, and then get as close as you possibly can to it in the world, wherever that is, wherever that takes you, and then whatever is supposed to happen will happen. And I thought that was cool because for me, it's like looking back at like my trajectory, it was kind of like, don't don't go to UMass, go to Fordham because that's where it's closer to everything. And don't don't minor, don't major in anything else. It's like this is what you want to do, major in this. And it's like don't stay in New York if you're doing you know uh, TV and film. You got to make the trip to LA. And it's it's just it's really been something that I've kind of. Uh, kept going back to throughout uh, throughout this whole process. And on the flip side, what would you, uh, advice would you offer? Uh, you know, you're coming more and more recognizable. People may look up to you to to fill that, that yeah. voice in their head. I mean, I think, uh, I'm gonna kind of piggyback off of uh, what Mr. Defoe said, and yeah. I think very early on in life we start, uh, whether we realize it or not, figuring out what we like and what we don't like. Mm -hmm. and. And I think that's important because I, I think we realize earlier than we think what what we like and what we're more inclined to, to be doing later on. So I, I encourage especially young people to um, pay attention to that as they're growing up. Even if you're you know you're young and you know pay attention to what it is that makes you happy and, and uh, that kind of what keeps you going because in in and pursue that no matter what it is no matter yeah, if you think it's not cool or if it's not uh, normal or, or if it is normal, whatever it is, pay attention to that uh, and, and nurture it because it, it means something and, and keep doing it until it doesn't feel right anymore. Awesome advice. John, thank you so much for taking time out to thank be with me. Thank you so me. much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank pleasure. you.